I'm going to be talking about um, how faith contradicts the circumstances. You know, we all face circumstances in our bodies, in our finances, perhaps in our profession, in our families. So faith contradicts circumstances. In Hebrews 13, 5 and 6, it says, For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Are we boldly saying that the Lord is our helper? That is what we should be saying. Well, you all pray for me. I feel as if the Lord has forsaken me, cried one poor sister. I don't know if I can make it or not. I hope I can. Pray for me that I'll hold out faithful until the end. This is a familiar request in prayer and testimony meetings. And all of us have been, all of us have been guilty of feeling that way. Maybe we didn't say it. We've all been, we've all been there. This is a familiar request. That's called self-pity. Sorry for ourselves. Poor me, poor me. Self-pity. I've heard someone, some teaching that it's the worst demon of them all. Well, I don't, I can't prove that, but self-pity is, you know, you don't understand what I'm going through. Oh. Mm. This is a familiar request in prayer and testimony meetings, but that is not what God told us to do. He said, rejoice in the Lord always. If you're feeling sorry for yourself, how can you rejoice in the Lord? Nowhere in the Bible does God instruct us to boldly say, I'm whipped, I'm defeated. The devil's got me bound. I will never, no, the Bible says, I will never leave thee. I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. And if you've been there, and if you're in the middle of it right now, self-pity, just pick yourself up by the bootstraps and say, Lord, I repent. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've been letting myself feel sorry for myself, and I repent. I know that you will never leave me nor forsake me. So not only do I repent, and I know that you forgive me, but I forgive myself. And I'm going to start a whole new chapter here, doing, saying what you say about me. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. Quit saying the wrong thing and start saying the right thing. Quit saying the wrong thing because that will just lead to more, more despair and self-pity. Uh, quit saying the wrong thing and start saying the right thing. Say the Lord is your helper. Say the Lord is your healer. Say the Lord took your infirmities and bore your sicknesses, yours, yours. And yes, we've all done things that we, de we know we deserved it, stupid things. But Jesus paid for every stupid thing I ever did and every stupid thing you ever did to open the door for that sickness or that torment. So say, say, for, like I said, pick yourself up, dust yourself off, Repent, forgive yourself, and get on with business here. Say, the Lord is your healer. Say, the Lord is your helper. Say it. Say, the Lord took your infirmities and bore your sicknesses. Keep talking about the right thing. Keep believing the right thing. Keep talking about the right thing. Keep believing the right thing. Wrong thinking, wrong believing, and wrong talking will defeat you. That's really powerful, isn't it? The wrong thinking. What did I say? Wrong. I'm sorry. Not. <clears throat> Let me find the right place here. It's wrong thinking, wrong believing, and wrong talking will defeat you. You hear that? It will, it will defeat you. It will. Wrong thinking, wrong believing, and wrong talking will defeat you. And it will defeat you regarding your children that you're believing God for to come out of the darkness and into the light. 
It'll defeat you in your finances. It'll defeat you in your bodies. It'll defeat you. Wrong thinking, wrong believing, and wrong talking will defeat you. The devil can't defeat you because Jesus has already defeated the devil. On his own, on his own, unless we open the door, on his own, the devil cannot defeat you because Jesus has already defeated him for you. You defeat yourself with wrong thinking, wrong believing, and wrong talking. Or if Satan does defeat you, you've permitted him to do so with wrong thinking, wrong believing, and wrong talking. It is a consent of ignorance. And it might be exactly that. You might not have realized what you're doing until right now you're realizing it, that it was wrong, with, and, and, and just get it under the blood. If you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. So, you know, basically, basically you just have to say, God, you know, I see the light now. I'm sorry. I've been, I've been playing right into the devil's hands. And, and, uh, and I know you forgive me now because I'm asking and I forgive myself and I'm going to start on a new leaf here. So God has given us his word to direct us so our believing will be right and our thinking is right and our talking is right so if our thinking is right and our believing is right and our talking is right we can truly say the lord is my helper the lord is my strength the lord is my helper the lord is my strength father in the name of jesus i i just declare right now that satan you cannot steal the word that was just sown into the hearts of my listeners and i i father god i ask you that this fruit goes deep down that it's not snatched away by by the devil and that it's not doesn't this seed doesn't fall on rocky ground that it never grows and the seed doesn't doesn't uh get parched by the sun and never grow i just call the seed good seed in good soil that takes deep root and is and changes turns lives around in Jesus wonderful name amen